A banner stands on a broken mountaintop. An eagle, backdropped by a lightning bolt cross. Dawn rises. A sickly sun struggles through strangling clouds. Illumination gathers, and the carrion insects with it. I stand among the detritus of the broken dead, limbs cast about like the toys of a maniac child. Blood-watering stone that were once wet beneath briny seas, flesh strewn like the discarded masks of a dance macabre, bullet casings forming anthills of spent malice, the remnants of armor like sprouted razor grass from lifeless barren rock, the foundations of the new age. A thunder warrior claws towards me. He has lost his weapons in the slaughter. He has lost his legs and most of his face too. His torso ends with a trailing bramble of slithering guts, sliming along the carrion field. His remaining eye still gleams with the spark of uncomprehending hate. He tries to speak from a ruined mouth. All that comes is bloody spittle, but I think he is asking why. My spear flashes down and it is done. The long watch begins. I am his custodian. I am the sentry on the wall. A wall that is not yet completed, but will stand for eternities hence. I feel the weight of years. I see the great work begin to form. The ground thumpers have finished their work. They have mutilated the catapatic planes, filing through its bones and smashing its ribs into smooth paste. They have flattened rocks and hills that have survived millennia of atomic war. In the wake of the ground thumpers comes the work of a billion mortal hands. Menials, serfs, artisans, masons. They are all fuel for this flame, the human component of a labor that will not end until they are long rotted in the ground. They are accompanied by servitor things and black smog vehicles, boots and trucks and wheels grinding into the compressed earth sagging beneath the weight of quarried stone. They construct the outer wall, the eternity wall. I oversee their toil. I inspect imported stone and imported labor. On this day, I kill 37 agitators and 22 saboteurs. Their corpses are added to the furnaces of forges, their death stink mingling to nothing among the charnel smog of implacable industry. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. This will be the first wall. Beyond it, across the catabatic plains, shall be nothing. Menzo of Trevere commences the work for which he will be remembered. He is young, but he will be old when his opus is complete. The Annapurna Gate will be the most beautiful of its kind that humanity will ever produce. And yet it starts as mere blocks of orbis and lazulite and realized in blueprint canvas and charcoal sketches. He is terrified of me. He complains that every killing is a distraction to the workings of his sparking mind. I do not respond. His work matters, but he does not. Over three decades, his work transcends the frailty of his flesh. Wrinkles set deep into collapsing skin, eyes dim to roomy oceans. Hair thins and loses its color but the Annapurna Gate takes form. I am unchanged. The Gate is not my only station. We are the vaunted few. We go everywhere. The first statue is raised in the investory, atop an empty, ouse-like plinth. They call him Horus Lupercal, the first found, the 16th, Primarch of the Lunar Wolves Legion. He has been discovered on an ugly, lawless world in the third quadrant of the Segmentum Solar. His features are masculine and proud, the features of a warlord, of a conqueror. When I look up at him, his stone lip seems to curl in regal contempt. The administrators and the bureaucrats are excited. They speak of the Great Crusade and Horus Lupercal. They speak of the other 19 plinths arranged around the circumference of a circle two kilometers wide. They say that Horus calls the Emperor Father. They say that the Emperor calls Horus Son. There is disgust in my heart. There is bile in my throat. 
The Emperor cannot consider Horus his son. It is a deceit, but tools must be maintained, blade sharpened, ego soothed. I wish I was beside him. I wish I was among the stars with the others. I wish my duty was there and not here, but I understand and I obey. The palace is more than a building, it is a monument, his promise to humanity, his fidelity to them, set in marble stone, the grandeur of humankind's future as galactic sovereign, the great lighthouse that shines its illumination to banish old night. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor, but I must defend his promise. I must keep vigil over the expression of my sovereign's dream. So I understand. I obey. Horus Lupercal stares down at me. His lip curls. He is not superior to me. I turn my face away and take my leave. What is loyalty? The palace takes shape without and within, outer and inner, astride mountains and beneath them. Ants in human shape crawl over its constructions, curved backs, weathered hands. No plinth of the investory stands empty now. They are arranged around a gladiatorial arena, spaced apart, facing one another in martial challenge. Mortals flock to see the faces of his generals. I avoid the place when duty allows. What is loyalty? I am not human, the mere product of animal rutting. I am not Astartes, mass-produced on gen conveyors. I am a custodian of the Emperor of Humanity. I am a custodian of the Emperor's dream. I think. I reason. I am. What is loyalty? We have asked this often, arguing into the night, to hone the faculties of our analytical skill, to philosophize and debate and reason in his image. I am infused with the golden light of his blood. I am loyal to him, because there is nothing but him. And yet, without choice, where then loyalty? I am his. I will lay down my life and soul to his protection. It is my nature, but he is the architect of that nature. I would not choose to be different, but perhaps that is gene determined too. I am reminded of one of the archaic faiths of ancient earth, the Malak, angels of a heathen god, created without will beyond the desire to follow his command, and mortals blessed and cursed with the temptation of choice. Am I not then angelic? Our loyalty is not conditional. It is not a preference. It is simply what we are. Loyalty does not need choice. It is exalted by its absence and with choice, rot. I watched the human ants scuttle over the forming palace, raising monuments to their undeserved future. I remember what it took to bring them to heal. I remember the death and blood. I remember what they are without his guidance, unworthy. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. I consider the Primarchs, his generals, blessed and cursed with the temptation of choice. What rot do these overgrown children bring? It has been two centuries since I saw my sovereign last. They say he musters great strength to Ulanor. They say he marshals three legions, the fifth, the thirteenth, the sixteenth. One hundred thousand Astartes to fight alongside eight million Imperial army troops and one hundred titans of the Legio Mortis. But I am here. The great construction is finished. I stand atop the Heliosican Tower and look out across my Emperor's design. On other days I would see nothing beyond the development of clouds, but today the sky is clear. To say it is awe-inspiring would not do justice to this secular miracle. Let eyes pass across the gilded marble of ten thousand minarets, the Tower of Hegemon, the air shimmering to the flow of aluminum and data, the Tower of Heroes, jet black among a sea of gold, sweep down across the domes of the Senatorum Imperialis's great chamber and the Hegemon Parliament, 
across the highway stretch of the Via Occidentus, the halls of weapons and glories, the grand processional that leads deep into the crust of old earth, where two titans of the Legio Ignatum stand vigil over the Eternity Gate. Look out across the ultimate wall and its sections, the Saturnine, the Exultant, the Sanctus, the Europa, the Adamant, eyes gliding over the thousand gardens, the Sigilites retreat, the Catapat Terrace, the Hanging Gardens, and then beyond that, the Lion's Gate, taller than mountains, and beyond even that, the Outer Palace, the Lion's Gate spaceport reaching into the upper atmosphere of Earth, the Black Keeps within the City of Sight, the Fortresses, the Forges, the Observatories, the Halls, the Lesser Governmental Palaces, the Libraries, the Damned Investory, the Gates, the Eternity Wall, and then the Catabatic Plains, stretching blankly across an arid horizon, the Imperial Palace of Terror, the Throne of Old Earth, the political heart of the Milky Way Galaxy. It contains billions, administrators, bureaucrats, politicians, laborers, masons, soldiers, municipal workers, scribes, astropaths, spies. Whatever can be imagined finds realization here. Billions upon billions of mortal bodies across over four million chambers. A revelation of gold and silver, magnificence beyond magnificence. The largest man-made structure in the known galaxy. The masters of the Masonic guilds wept to look upon their creation. I understand why. This palace will last for eternity. The Imperium will stand triumphant for eternity. The Emperor will rule for eternity. I whisper a single word. Ave. They say he is to return. They say he will travel to Old Earth and perform his next great labor within the Sanctum Imperialis itself. First found Horus is to be War Master. They say he saved my Sovereign's life. I do not believe it. The Custodes were at my Sovereign's side. The sun breaks across the tattered horizon. It struggles through the radiation clouds of Old Night, the sickly refuge of atomic war. And yet, when it breaks the Himalayas and stretches its radiance across the Heliosican Tower, its light carries a glory eclipsed only by the Emperor himself. I sense new beginnings. I sense a time of unparalleled triumph. He returns. The great work is done, and another begins. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. Illumination has dawned. The horrors of strife are distant memory. The false gods are cast down. The sorcerer kings are burned on their own pyres, and the warlord tyrants are beheaded. Reason is the byword of this new age. Reason and hope. Humanity no longer need fear devils or demons in the darkness of the stars. I look out across the palace bathed in the morning sun. I grip tightly at my spear and breathe in the air. I would have stood by him regardless. My loyalty was never conditional. If he had proved a tyrant and a warlord, a sorcerer and a liar, it would not have mattered. And yet how blessed I am to know that he is the salvation of humankind, the bringer of light, the thanatizer of untruth, my king, my sovereign, the emperor eternal. The hordes of rot overflow the unreal passageways of alien inheritance, alike only in their malice and murderous intent. There is no night. There is no day. My spear is a flash of gold across a sea of darkness. Its mass-reactive bolts are brief illuminations in an infinity of lies. My spear runs empty. I throw it back to the armory through and draw the Meridian swords. They dance through decayed flesh and filth-crusted bone. I kill, I kill, and kill, and kill. They are too many. The armory through calls my name. I catch my spear, swords already sheathed. I unleash bolt rounds into the armies of annihilation. 
I cleave and sweep and slice and rend. I kill, I kill and kill and kill. They are too many. My spear runs empty. My armory thrall is gone, disappeared beneath the endless deluge. I throw my spear through the cyclopean eye of a hulking beast and draw the meridian swords. I kill, I kill and kill and kill. They are too many. It was not supposed to end this way. Among the gibbering masses I see them for the first time. Astartes in crimson red, mutilated and mutated. Traitors. The Emperor gave them a galaxy and they spat in his face. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. I kill, I kill, and kill, and kill. I will die here, but not before killing one of them. They chant the heathen lies of a false prophet. They speak of their slavery and the embracing of their chains. I will kill them. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. The servos of my armor are clogged with the pus and ooze of extra-dimensional vitae. The plume of my helmet is plastered wet and flat. My blood flows from a myriad cuts. It does not matter. His final gift to me is hate. The traitor of the 17th screams in exultation. He howls the name of the first found, even as my swords cross like bloody scissors and remove his head. I kill my first Astartes. It will be my last. I am impaled by a dozen rusted blades. I feel their jagged edges rip my organs asunder. I fall. Humanity does not deserve the Emperor. Here comes the darkness. Now humanity gets exactly what it deserves. <laughs>